Respected leaders and guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Welcome to Huawei Cloud Tech Summit. I'm Wang Xu, today's moderator. Starting from innovation and making technology benefit more, today, 2021 Huawei Cloud Tech Summit comes to Guangzhou. We will talk about cloud native modernization of applications and IoT. Together with experts, we are going to discuss cutting edge technologies and release the latest products and solutions from Huawei and share best practices of the industry and explore the path of enterprise intelligent upgrading. First of all, please welcome Zhang Yuxing, Huawei Cloud CTO, to talk about a ubiquitous cloud foundation for an intelligent world. Please welcome. Dear guests, friends, good morning. I'm very glad to see you again at Huawei Cloud Tech Summit. We hope that through today's summit, we can discuss cloud native technologies and also the path of enterprise intelligent upgrading. My topic of today's presentation is a ubiquitous cloud foundation for an intelligent world. Last year, for the first time, Huawei announced its idea and solution and products about Cloud Native 2.0. After that, the friends and partners in the industry have paid great attention to this. One year has passed. Huawei Cloud, together with customers, partners, and industrial players, we have made a lot of exploration related to Cloud Native 2.0. Today, I will share with you the latest practices and also products. Why we attach so much importance to Cloud Native? I'm not talking about, I'm, I will not start from Cloud Native. Uh, I want to say that in Economist, it once said, without the container, there would be no globalization. We have seen global trade today. Well, that is based upon a small innovation. That is container technology. A container has enabled the global uh, shaping and logistics industry to change fundamentally because with containers, warehousing and logistics are standardized, so ports and air freight, and warehousing, and enterprise management have changed accordingly. Well, today, globalization is booming, and that has relied on a key technology, that is the container technology. Well, container is um, also a technology uh, in cloud native. For cloud native technologies, or uh, when we talk about the intelligent world, we can say that without cloud native, there can be no real digitalization or intelligence. Container technology is a very important technology of cloud native, and it's critical for the transformation. Cloud native technology to all partners, customers, enterprises, and governments. It's not just a tech technological transformation. It also brings changes to our own capabilities and business models. Globally, more and more customers, like enterprises and governments, are embracing cloud native technologies. According to IDC, by 2023, around 80% of the customers are going to use cloud native technologies. Cloud native technology is uh, uh, changing various industries like internet, finance, government, and manufacturing. The customers and the partners can get extra gains 
through cloud native technologies. And that is why we have attached so much importance to cloud native technologies, because if without cloud native, there can be no real digitalization or intelligence. So how can we achieve cloud native? Can every company become a cloud native based enterprise? There may be some misunderstanding. Uh, people may think that uh, the internet companies are moving faster in terms of cloud native. So is it true that only internet companies can become cloud native? We know that if we look at the traditional companies, the IT structure are siloed. Its system architecture and management are resource centric. You have certain resources for one application. It has OS uh, or uh, storage, uh, and you use the network to connect the resources. And the, the, the data is siloed in uh, one application. The resources are fragmented. Application capabilities are also fragmented. When moving to cloud, everything has changed. We are using a different mindset. Uh, the new mindset is cloud native. We think cloud native and act cloud native. In the past, um, we might thought about migrating the siloed applications to virtual machines or cloud. But can that help us to really achieve cloud native? I think the answer is no. Cloud native means that we should be application centric. A resource is not at the center anymore. We should focus more on how to modernize applications and leverage the value of applications. Because in the applications, you have the uh, industry know how. With cloud, we want to leverage the value of data. In the past, the data is fragmented in different systems. Can we centralize them and let the data flow and let data exchange so as to maximize the value of data? That is what we want to do with cloud native. Based upon that, as on the cloud, we have a different mindset and a different practices so we can significantly improve the capabilities of companies. By then, many capabilities will be grown in the cloud. Huawei aims to help every company to achieve that. We hope that we can help all companies to become cloud-native companies with cloud-native principle. And when we act uh, cloud-native, companies will become cloud-native enterprises. How can Huawei Cloud help companies to do that? We have three layers of um, actions. The first one is infrastructure as a service. By building globally available cloud infrastructure resources, we can help companies to access uh, the resources anywhere in the world. Now, over 70 countries uh, we have uh, data centers. We have 27 Huawei cloud regions and 61 available zones or AZs. Globally, Huawei cloud has covered over 170 countries and regions. So I can say that we can um, provide globally available services. And the second layer is technology as a service. Over the past decades, Huawei has accumulated ICT expertise. Our partners and customers need those technologies and expertise. If the customers or partners have to develop them by themselves, it's a big waste, and the development cycle will be long. So we want to convert those expertise into cloud services, and then through APIs, the customers can utilize those expertise. They do not need to reinvent the wheels. And that is technology as a service. We want to make Huawei's innovation and technologies available to our partners and customers. And the third layer is 
experience as a service. We know that each industry has its own uh, know-how and uh, experience. So we want to convert experience into service. We have um, built Huawei Cloud Kaitian A Pass. Uh, we hope that uh, the different industries can leverage this um, platform to share their experience so the industrial know-how can be made available to others. Then through infrastructure, technology, and experience, we are able to enable industries to go digital. After one year's practice, together with uh, partners, we have uh, uh, worked on many cases and uh, extracted uh, best practices. As cloud native is so important, so I think you are wondering how can we move to cloud native? Your company may also want to become a cloud native company. How can you do that? And how can you achieve digitalization and intelligence? Over the past year, we have accumulated some experience and uh, we have got some good practices together with customers and uh, partners. We call them as cloud native new paradigm. And I summarized 10 paradigms, and I'm going to elaborate one by one. Uh, the first one is uh, ubiquitous new paradigm. We found that when the enterprises uh, deepen their digital transformation, more and more services are on the cloud. In the early stage of cloud migration, you may have resources in multiple uh, data uh, data centers or one or two data centers. But as digitalization goes deeper, you may have services on public cloud, on your own IDC, or on a centralized data center. But due to business experience, uh, security, or latency requirements, some services are close to your own systems, like a production system. So you are placing them on the edge cloud, or you are using multiple clouds. In that case, you may have to manage a different cloud infrastructure, not just several public clouds. Now you are having a distributed cloud. You have centralized uh, and private cloud, or a uh, cloud that is uh, uh, close to you. The services are in the are in different clouds. In that case, can we use distributed cloud to help customers to integrate their applications, although the applications are distributed on different clouds? Can we use distributed cloud technology to collaborate data or integrate data? Although data are scattered in the different systems, but they can be governed in a unified manner. When the resources are distributed on different clouds, some resources are low cost, and some are uh, highly secure. And for some resources, the latency uh, should be very low. So can we? use all these resources in a coordinated manner and in an efficient manner. That is what we want to bring to you through distribution. With this new paradigm, we can collaborate edge network and cloud, and that can address the needs of the different services of the customer. It can be coordinated, coordinated through one cloud. So with this, Computing power, traffic, and data can be coordinated and scheduled in a unified manner. And this can adapt to the needs of the complex services of a company. The second new paradigm is computing new paradigm. After years of cloudification uh, from uh, offline servers to cloud, uh, achieving virtualization, moving services to the virtual machines. Some companies have already used a container to host their services. Cloud technologies are evolving. In the future, we are going to um, adopt a serverless. We believe that serverless is the best computing model for cloud native. 
because from physical machine to virtual machine to cloud, the applications are abstracted and services are decoupled with uh, physical uh, resources. In the future, can we completely decouple these two? So applications can only look at the application themselves, but not the architecture of the physical network or service or storage. We just need to raise SLA uh, requirements to the resources. For example, what ha how much computing power is needed, uh, what is the latency uh, needed. I don't care where the resources are and how they are managed. I just need to focus on the application's logic. By doing so, we can unleash resources of the cloud and the expertise uh, and companies can focus on the areas they are strong at. With uh, such a computing new paradigm is serverless. So in today's conference, I will share with you our new thoughts and progress related to serverless. My colleague Xu Feng will elaborate on that. I think the CIO of every company or the IT people of a company will feel that when you are using cloud, the utilization of the, the IT systems is increasing. For example, in the traditional data center, the utilization rate may be below 10%, while with cloud, you may have improved it to over 10% or even 20%. But as a company, in order to reduce cost and enhance efficiency, you may have higher requirements on resource utilization. Can we achieve 30%, 40%, or even 50%, or even higher utilization rate? You may find that when you use traditional cloud technologies, it's really difficult to achieve that target. So some companies are confused, including some IT staff. I'm using cloud, but the resource utilization rate has been improved uh, at a, a limited scale, maybe only less than 20%. To further improve utilization rate of resources, you should not only look at the resources themselves. You need to have a full stack uh, architecture. The supply and demand are decoupled. However, if we can coordinate the supply and the demand, we will be able to further enhance resource utilization rate and we can further improve the efficiency of a company. So here we have a new scheduling paradigm. The technology requirements, the multiple uh, or diversified SLA requirements and diversified computing power uh, requirements can be addressed. With many new technologies, we are able to sense the diversified requirements, and we can schedule applications and resources together. The fragmented resources uh, can be shared across uh, clusters, or we can pool the diversified computing power. By doing so, we can maximize the utilization of resources. Therefore, in the future, we'll be able to improve the resource utilization rate by 40 or 50 percent. Network is also very critical for a data center, and this is an uh, investment uh, focus. In the past, we talked about bandwidth, uh, network jitter, security of the network, and also latency. No matter it's the traditional data center where when you first move to the cloud, you will look at those technologies. Well, at the cloud native era, we are application centric. The applications care about application performance, application experience, and the response time, although there is some latency and I care about uh, the concurrency of the applications. So compared with the traditional uh, network language, it's different. 
and that raises a challenge to us. In the cloud native era, as we are modernizing applications, the requirements of applications need to be linked to the network language. So the application's requirements can be mapped to the resources, and the resource capabilities can directly support the SLA requirements of applications. So in the cloud native era, we should sense such requirements and transfer them to the cloud or translate them into the network language. And network capabilities uh, should be able to address the requirements of um, the applications. So for the network new paradigm, uh, we are application-centric. The cloud network will only will not only look at the network indicators, but aiming to help the applications to perform better. Over the past few years, on the cloud, we have converged not applications and data, but everything. Over the past years, IoT has just connected things or converged things. But after connectivity of things, what can we do with it? What value can we get from that? That is the topic discussed by all industries. With everything connected, in the end, we want to achieve everything intelligent. The purpose is not just to connect to them, but to make everything in the cloud develop their digital twins and dig value from that. In the end, we can build an intelligent world. Therefore, we say that the IoT should evolve from everything sensing to everything growing on the cloud. And we have several capabilities. Simple connectivity, simple connection, and low cost, and wide coverage. That is uh, some fundamental requirements. Well, after the connectivity issue is addressed, what should we do next? When everything is connected, we need to make the applications simple and make the development of digital twins simple. And digital twins should be able to collaborate to different applications so as to dig value from digital twins. So we have to achieve intelligent collaboration. By doing so, the digital twins can demonstrate their value. In the end, we want to monetize the value of things. How can we do that? All industries have capabilities to utilize the digital twins. Can such capabilities be opened? Can applications be developed based on digital twins? Can new equipment or products be developed based on digital twins? If we have industry know-how, can we inject the industry know-how into the digital twins? If we can do those things, we will be able to monetize digital twins. So three, through three means, we want to help you to have cloud-born and cloud-grown applications or things. By doing so, we will be able to build a real intelligent world. Talking about applications, applications and data are the core assets of a company. Many companies might have encountered such problems. You have developed a lot of applications. The applications are the assets or the accumulation of experience or, and the capabilities of a company. Well, once there is a new service or a new customer, if you want to reuse those applications, uh, you might encounter a lot of challenges because the architecture was outdated and applications were scattered in different systems, and it's uh, difficult to reuse them. If you want to restructure them, the cycle and the cost, cycle is long and the cost is high. So you might choose to develop a new application. 
But if you develop a new application, the old ones will become zombies and they are useless. So in the past, we emphasized more on development or building, but not governance. In the cloud native era, if we wanted to run the cloud system better, one key is that we need to have a better governance of applications. It should be based upon cloud resources. It has, it should have a modern architecture. More customers and partners are working on microservice restructuring, container-based restructuring, or distributed restructuring. The architecture is evolving. I mentioned serverless. Uh, that is a better technical architecture for the future, which can help you to make the architecture more lightweighted and more agile. As I mentioned in the beginning, cloud native transformation is not just about a technology transformation. It's also a transformation of production model, a mindset, and even business model. When it comes to applications, this is really uh, reflected from it. Besides changes of the architecture, the development and management of applications should change. In the past, the development cycle is long. You may take half a year, one year, or even two years to develop an application, and then half a year or one year for testing, and then place it in the data center, and then without modification in five years, because the development people has already changed. And if you modify it, you, you were you were worrying that it will affect the business. So that affected the new services launching. So can we change the development model into DevOps model so we can have agile development and faster iteration and quick try and error? We can have faster innovation and launch new functions and new services while at the same time maintaining the old services. This is welcomed by everyone who is working on enterprise applications, and this is a major transformation. And last, in terms of uh, modernizing applications, we should not only look at development, but also uh, governance. All codes reflect the experience and the capabilities of uh, the industries, and it's uh, invested by the companies. Such assets should be utilized. If we adopt everything as a service uh, principle, if we convert them into cloud services and they can be invoked through APIs, then we will be able to use modern governance methods to turn those applications into assets. And if such assets are managed in an efficient way, if they can be, um, if, if they can be utilized by the others, you will get benefits from it. So the, the intelligent assets can continue to create a value. That is uh, what we want to achieve with uh, application modernization. Using modern ways to organize applications and manage applications in modern ways and monetize them. Yes. Yeah, so Data is also the core assets of enterprises. In the past, uh, data is siloed and dispersed. And now various industries uh, need to centralize their data and uh, make the data flowing among their processes and monetize the data. So uh, in the distributed databases or the data lake houses, so the, adopt, the enterprises mainly adopt the distributed architecture. But can we change the uh, siloed uh, local deployment or systems uh, into a uh, data lake houses? Then we just have one copy in the data lake houses, and then we can maximize the value of the data in the data lake houses. And then, then we can also improve the efficiency of the data utilization. So can we use the modernized the, the, uh, data utilization uh, to flow the data and the monetize the data? I think that's possible for us. So with the data, we hope that uh, we can use the cloud native um, data lake houses and the databases and the big data, uh, AI, and uh, other leading technologies 
and the uh, through the uh, distributed massive storage and the separated computing and the storage and the multi mode uh, engine uh, etc so we can um, Simplify the complex businesses and the logic uh, with a one copy of the data. So we can also leverage the serverless architecture uh, to uh, monetize the data. Uh, serverless can provide the high precision and the uh, high efficiency to transform the traditional the uh, data monetization to a new way. For example, uh, uh, charge the data uh, or monetize the data by time uh, or by segment. So AI uh, is also uh, a necessary tool for industry transformation and upgrade. Till today, AI has come to a new stage. I think that earlier we believe the AI was a very challenging or complex technologies, either for the application development or the uh, production. So it's a high tech te technology we believed in the past. Uh, the standardization of the data need the experts. The training of the models need the experts like the uh, doctors or PhDs. In the for the development of the AI uh, models, uh, AI apps. Then uh, in the past, we need the experts or the professionals to deal with this task. But this actually limits the development of AI. And do we have a new paradigm or model for AI so that we can facilitate the implementation of AI in various industries? So here, we propose a new paradigm for AI. We do not need to train the models, uh, AI models from scratch. We can provide uh, some uh, general or standardized models for the uh, industries. So here we have uh, the uh, pre-trained models, and then the enterprises do not need to spend much efforts in training the models. So we just need to pre-train the models and uh, tune or refine the models based on small amount of the sample data. And we also improved the precision of the uh, 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 models, and uh, uh, we can combine the uh, machine learning and the in-depth learning optimization uh, to iteratively optimize the models so we can quickly shorten the AI development cycle. And the third, for AI, in terms of the AI training, uh, actually we use some statistics way for AI training, but the different industries has their own uh, forms of uh, knowledge, uh, which uh, represents industry wisdom and is a uh, key to AI implementation. But this knowledge or know-how was uh, is uh, kept in the brains of the people in the past, and now we believe that if we can combine the industry know-how and the AI and uh, com uh, through knowledge computing, then we can greatly promote uh, improve the uh, precision of AI. For example, uh, earlier we can achieve the precision of the 80%, but uh, by combining the industry know-how, we can improve the precision to 90%. So we proposed a new paradigm for AI. So here we think we can combine industry know-how and AI, and uh, through knowledge computing, then we can improve the precision of AI models. So this will also greatly promote the widespread implementation of AI in the industry. So we believe these new measures can help us to apply AI in the in various industries, uh, especially in their specific, specific scenarios. Next is about security. 
So security is a key concern for uh, enterprises during their digital transformation, uh, especially for their transformation to cloud. They are concerned about the security of the cloud. So on cloud, we hope that uh, we can be more secure uh, on cloud. Actually, uh, on cloud, we have uh, uh, consolidate the experience and expertise of a various experience in security compliance, including the compliance with the uh, regulations inside and outside of China. For example, for Huawei, we have uh, accumulated uh, years of the experience uh, in security compliance. We built our zero trust architecture with these technologies and capabilities, uh, we actually can share with uh, these capabilities with the uh, small and medium-sized enterprises, which are lack of this kind of expertise in this regard. So we can work with our partners and customers to share this experience and help our partners to uh, do the security governance uh, in uh, with the cloud native technologies and so that they can comply with the regulations globally. And we also leverage this new architecture uh, to our IDC and deliver the security in IDC. Then the each industry uh, has uh, their own specific uh, capabilities. Uh, so they are regarded as apps before. Uh, but can we reuse these apps or capabilities uh, widely? If we do not have the source, uh, then these capabilities uh, couldn't be replicated to other industries. So how can we reuse this? Uh, uh, can we reuse these capabilities? The answer is yes. So uh, in the past, uh, if we need to customize the apps, we have to do the secondary development. That is very time consuming. And now we have a new paradigm for SaaS. So this new paradigm can um, help us to do the transformation in from the uh, three aspects. First, the experience as a service. So we can ext uh, extract the common capabilities and make them service oriented uh, uh, by simply calling APIs. These APIs do not need to be opened, uh, developed again. Second, uh, we can use the light app wizard uh, based on the reusable capabilities. And uh, software vendors and enterprises can simply develop a light applications that meet personalized requirements and innovative uh, applications in the service on service mode and they just they we provide the drag and drop model to help them to customize their apps with the SaaS model third uh, we can also support the assetized usage so most of these apps actually is, uh, are uh, were idle or were not used after development. But with the new paradigm, uh, we can monetize or assetize uh, the data or apps. So they can be uh, trans. Uh, we industry capabilities enable assetized transactions and continuous operations to achieve business uh, success. We can monetize these assets and they can realize their business values. So through this uh, new paradigm uh, of uh, industry enablement, uh, we can aggregate capabilities and assets for easy integration and uh, lean development. Then we can start a new SaaS application development and use mode in the cloud native 2.0 era. Then we can uh, monetize the apps and the data. So, Based on our experience, when we proposed the strategy of all digital, all cloud, and AI driven, and uh, guided by the new cloud native 2.0 paradigm, when we cloud uh, uh, provides the cloud native 2.0 pavilion, so that uh, we can realize the 
uh, agile uh, businesses and the trustworthiness of uh, applications, security of the applications. So we hope that we can open these capabilities through communities, uh, partners, and then we can promote the development of a uh, not native uh, community. So today, uh, we also uh, bring you a se series of new cloud native 2.0 products featuring efficient resources, all things connected. And uh, we also uh, designed some keynote speeches and uh, checks for further interpretation. Uh, we hope that these products can support our partners and customers' business development. And with the chain of the industrial digitization and the digital industrialization, digital technologies are becoming increasingly important for enterprise development. So we hope that uh, we can um, leverage the new paradigm of cloud native 2.0 to realize a uh, ubiquitous cloud foundation for an intelligent world. We hope that we can help enterprises to achieve a quality and efficient digital transformation and leap uh, for uh, development so that everyone can be a uh, cloud native. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Zhang Yuxin, for your sharing. Now please welcome the IT Director Engineer of GAC Honda, Mr. Zheng Wenjiang, to share with us. His topic is embracing cloud native as the bedrock for digital transformation. Let's listen from GAC Honda about their practice of Huawei Cloud Native 2.0 based digital journey. Please welcome. Dear leaders, guests, good morning. I'm Zheng Wenjiang from JC Honda. It's my honor to come here and um, share with you JC Honda's exploration and practice on IT construction. This year, with the efforts of all employees, our products and uh, services have reached a new height. You can see that this year, our company has won four uh, number one awards from GD Power. JD Power is the most professional and authoritative uh, market insight uh, companies or market research companies. Being able to win four number one awards, it shows great recognition of uh, JZ Honda's products and services. Let's look at my left side. JC Honda has four hybrid vehicle models, and this year we organized the third hybrid power vehicle challenge. The purpose of uh, organizing such a challenge is to answer one question. People are saying that hybrid power vehicle can save oil. Well, this competition aims to answer one question. That is, how far can you drive with uh, 60 liters oil? You can see the numbers here. From those figures, you can see the d answer. A cord sport hybrid, a 60 liters range can reach over 2,000 kilometers. And the hybrid, um, other models can also uh, exceed 3,000 kilometers. This shows that JC Honda has its expertise. Behind such owners and uh, performance, we have IT systems and IT teams to support them. Here are the service scope and objects of JC Honda's IT. This includes four assembly factories, one engine factory, 
these factories have produced and sold over 800, uh, over 8 million vehicles accumulatively. The production line take time is 51 seconds. That means you get a new car every 51 seconds. We serve over 10,000 employees, over 600 special stores, and over 500 suppliers. At present, JC Honda's IT is evolving and to play a more strategic role. In the past, we focused on centralizing resources and also building business process on the IT systems. And now we are uh, upgrading the business systems and integrate data. At present, according to our plan, we are building a series of uh, supporting platform for digital transformation. Like Mr. Zhang has mentioned, application modernization, data modernization, and intelligent new paradigms. Uh, these are highly relevant uh, to our work. In our platform, we want to create container cloud platform, industrial internet platform, AI platform, and also big data platform. We have that. By building such platforms, we will be able to innovate more on our business and make our transformations to be more efficient. During this process, planning is a must, and a good plan should be pragmatic, and it should be agreed by all parties. Well, that is not easy to be achieved. In our life, sometimes we say, um, some words are bullshit. Well, in the Sichuan dialect, uh, gui hua, which means planning, sounds like a gui hua, which means bullshit. I think this has reflected the wisdom of our ancestors. The boundary between gui hua and gui hua is not that clear. When some critical conditions changes, A good plan may become no nonsense. Well, when we are suspected, sometimes we have to stick to the plan, and sometimes we have to make adjustments. Here is an English word, apex. This is what we want to achieve, and this is the direction of our IT team. It means surpassing the ordinary. We hope that with our efforts, we'll be able to break the limits, optimize the company's process from an end-to-end picture uh, or perspective, enable users, inspire users to innovate proactively, dig pain points of the business, combining data and AI. and explore more prediction-related services and combining ROI and long-term prospect. Explore more potential value. Talking about digital transformation,
Talking about uh, digital transformation, uh, sorry, wait a sec. Well, talking about digital transformation and to innovate services in the future, we think there are two drivers. Uh, the first one is innovation requirements raised by the business departments. Uh, for example, a change of production models and marketing and uh, service innovations. And the second driver is uh, new technologies. And the IT team we proactively work on that. So that means the IT team should be more uh, proactive, and IT team should talk to the business department more. Over the past two years, uh, we have conducted a lot of pilots of the new technologies and new applications. With natural language processing technologies, uh, we are piloting an intelligent Q&A. And based on the deep learning uh, image recognition technology, uh, we uh, are improving the uh, quality inspection at the production lines. We're also using uh, 3D modeling technologies to develop digital uh, vehicle models. So when the consumers uh, shop their cars, they can have immersive experience. And with IoT, uh, we are able to collect uh, more data of the equipment. And when there are faults, we can um, locate the faults more easily. And blockchain is also used for anti-tempering. Here I just listed a few technologies that we have uh, tried. JC Honda's IT journey. In the early years, our IT systems support um, production, supply, and sales. Uh, later, we upgraded the core systems and streamlined the processes. We, our IT systems uh, have covered a wider scope of our business. After 2020, We have invested more in IT reform. We upgraded the technical uh, platform. In addition, we applied new IT technologies. Meanwhile, our business has changed. For example, IOV, and new marketing, and new services. And one feature of such uh, business requirements is that they have brought great uh, uncertainties. And also, they require short time to market. And that raised great challenge to our IT team. Therefore, we are now using cloud native principle, and we're using a container cloud platform. We have tailored cloud native uh, foundation or infrastructure. And this is able to meet the business needs while at the same time uh, we are upgrading the traditional systems. And we are modernizing the ONAM of the traditional systems. The container cloud platform of uh, JC Honda is based on Huawei Cloud CCE Agile Edition. 
And last year's Q4, uh, we have put it into use. Now, around 10 systems are running on this platform, and the returns are obvious. We can have a, a refined granular, a fine granular resource scheduling and control, and we can have better matching of the business plan and the computing power distribution. This helped us significantly improve resource utilization. We have achieved automation and standardization from code hosting to service launching. Maintenance efficiency is improved. Development team do not need to be bothered by the resource management. So development team can focus more on the realization of uh, business logics. With such a platform, uh, we are able to innovate in a more agile manner. Here's one example. Uh, this is our new energy uh, vehicle monitoring system. The government released uh, many laws and regulations and policies related to new energy vehicle monitoring. And that raised high requirements uh, to the monitoring system. Our system is uh, built on Huawei Cloud. This system uses containers. It provides uh, real-time data uploading, uh, remote vehicle control, and vehicle monitoring and other functions. Huawei Cloud CCE uh, technology ecosystem is open and unified. That ensures feasibility of future business evolution. Container Cloud is elastic, efficient, and highly secure. It can address uh, the needs of our business growth and also legal compliance. So the next step, what well, currently our Container Cloud is uh, deployed in our Zhenchen data center, and it is connected with Huawei Cloud CCE. In the future, uh, we are going to uh, deploy a new phase of cloud native infrastructure in uh, Huangpu uh, data center in Guangzhou. By doing so, we can connect uh, the data centers in Zhenchen and Huangpu and also Huawei Cloud. Such a distributed and hybrid uh, cloud infrastructure will offer us more choices for service deployment. In the future, we can have uh, application and data collaboration between the data centers in Zhenchen and Huangpu, avoid single point failures, uh, and ensure business continuity. In the end, the cloud native infrastructure can be managed and operated in a unified manner. And last, what I have said is just the beginning of our work. Facing more challenges in the future, I look forward to achieving more. By then, I hope I will I have the opportunity to share with you again. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Zhou Wenjiang, for your wonderful sharing. Next, let's welcome Mr. Xu Feng, uh, Director of the Past Service Product Department of uh, Huawei Cloud. Will, he will share the topic, Modernizing Application to Enable Agile Innovation in All Scenarios. Dear distinguished guests and friends online and offline, 
Good morning. I am Xu Feng from Huawei Cloud. It's a great honor to come to the beautiful city of Guangzhou. Today, I will share with you about the topic of modernizing applications for agile business. COVID-19 has accelerated the digitalization across industries. The traditional retail, logistics, and electronics industries ranked the top tier of digital maturity. The revenue growth gap between digital leaders and other players has widened from 1.4 times before the COVID-19 to 3.7 times after the COVID-19. This shows that the digital transformation brings huge competitive advantages to enterprises. At the same time, we recognize that apps are the primary form of digital delivery, so applications are critical in digital transformation. According to IDC, 25% of China's top 500 companies will become a software producer by 2025. So the software is transforming the world and also is disrupting the world. However, Many enterprises face various difficulties brought about traditional applications during digital transformation. For example, tightly coupled architecture of legacy systems cannot rapidly expand to cope with the surgeon services. The service rollout period is long. Uh, usually six months, which cannot quickly respond to service requirements during the transformation. It is difficult to integrate new and legacy applications, which cannot protect and accumulate enterprise assets. Looking uh, future, if we couldn't manage the apps uh, well, then that will lower our uh, efficiency, and we have to spend efforts again and again for some replicated, uh, uh, duplicated work. So based on more than 20 years of uh, digital experience, Huawei has uh, proposed a methodology for application modernization covering infrastructure, architecture design, development, and OM, and the governance and operation to help enterprises move from traditional apps to modern apps. So more enterprises increased their efficiency by 10 times and increased resource elasticity by 20 times after collaborating with Huawei. So just now, Mr. Uh, Zhang uh, introduced how we uh, migrate or transform our infrastructure so that we can shorten the development cycle from months to the cloud native infrastructure. So just now, Mr. Zhang talked a lot about the infrastructure. Then uh, I will focus on the other three aspects. So first, uh, we found that, uh, so firstly, we can see that uh, we can look at the direction of the business architecture design. So before developing services, enterprises need to understand the resource such as servers, operating systems, and databases, and pay attention to OM. So developers need to concern a lot about these resources and even security issues in case of the hacker's attack. So if developers do not need to learn or concern about these basic services, OM, and only need to focus on the innovation, then this will greatly improve productivity for enterprises. So serverless architecture is such a design that integrates evolution of a computing architecture and application architecture. So it integrates the microservice uh, architecture and evolve towards a serverless architecture. So serverless architecture has features such as OM-free. Uh, you just need to consume about the implementation of your business. And then 
you just need to quickly uh, deliver your codes. They can help you to implement a fast rollout, and it also supports a high elasticity. So now it has been used in various application uh, scenarios. So here, uh, I would like to share a video. In the video, serverless has been used in various scenarios. So, based on the uh, uh, the fire engine system, actually is uh, used as a serverless architecture in case of a fire uh, a warning or a fire alarm. Then we can quickly identify the location of the fire, and then we can come transfer the related uh, or send the related messages and information to firefighters. So the service can um, provide a quick response to emergencies. So based on Huawei's Yuan Rong kernel, Huawei Cloud provides a series of service solutions, including Function Graph, which is the first in the industry to support stateful functions. So why we need the stateful functions? We have various uh, services. Then uh, these services need to connect to different data systems. So with stateful functions, so we can separate the computing and the data. Then you can uh, store these. Uh, services and uh, connect to different uh, functions. Second, the code start speed uh, of these functions is above the industrial level, so it's about the uh, is uh, very short. And the uh, serverless application hosting engine CAE implements one-stop application hosting and governance. Event grade can implement fast event-driven applications. And we can provide a quick response and connections. And for developers, we also provide the serviceless tool chain based on Huawei Cloud IDE. It is the first in the industry to support cluster function debugging, which enables end to end real time tracing of the tool chain. Uh, making serverless application development more efficient. Huawei first applies the serverless to Huawei mobile services uh, during the uh, COVID-19 or the pandemic. Huawei uh, real-time COVID information applet developed based on the serverless was rolled out in just one day. Uh, with 700 million monthly active users. In addition, Huawei Video also uses a low latency and uh, elasticity uh, of the serverless technology to improve the codec efficiency by 60%. So with the rapid development of ICT technologies, various innovative services such as live social networking, mobile banking, and online education have emerged. 
So in addition to enriching people's lives, services are also required to be highly available and without interruption. For example, in the live streaming, finance and e-commerce uh, transactions, service interruption of a single one minute may cause millions of dollars loss. For example, the credit system uh, of uh, the uh, in the live streaming may cause millions of dollars loss with one minute interruption. So Huawei Cloud Mass Multi Cloud HA service helps enterprises build an application oriented across cloud multi active architecture. Implementing traffic switching between multiple clouds within seconds, preventing various service accidents. For example, Huawei Cloud Mass provides services for Douyu, a leading game live streaming platform in China. So this ensures zero downtime and automatic failover within seconds for hundreds of millions of users. In terms of the development and OM, Huawei has been building leading development, development and OM processes and tools for 30 years to improve R&D efficiency. Huawei has a profound experience in ICT domain. We have accumulated a lot of the experience, and then we also uh, if, uh, migrate or develop explore the cloud services, uh, cloud businesses, and the consumer businesses. Huawei has complex product forms, tens of millions of lines of codes, and uh, uh, or a single product team might have thousands of people distributed uh, globally. So how to improve the efficiency of this uh, uh, R&D team? We face great challenges. So we introduced the advanced concepts and tools such as IPD, Agile, Continuous Delivery, and DevOps, and integrate these philosophies and tools in our system. So we gradually improved our R&D efficiency by 10 times. Now we can do 500,000 builds and 5 million automated tests a day. That means that every day uh, we can release uh, 500,000 releases to our users every day. So that was impossible 10 years ago. We accumulate these excellent practices and technical capabilities on Huawei Cloud, David Cloud, and it is an uh, it is an integrated. Uh, it uh, it provides uh, one-stop delivery capabilities for the entire application lifecycle, streamlines the entire process of requirements, development, test, and development, and provides various development modes of full code and low code. Supports more than ten uh, development languages and integrates more than three hundred tools and fifteen thousand check rules. So currently, Huawei Cloud has set up more than 30 software development innovation centers uh, nationwide and serving uh, more than 1.5 million developers, uh, making application development more agile and industry innovation more efficient. So next. I also want to share with you a customer case. China Economic Information Service, CEIS, is an agency responsible for economic information services under Xinhua News Agency. Uh, CEIS told us that their R&D platform was composed of multiple open source software, but the integration was poor and the efficiency was very low, and they also needed some dedicated uh, persons to maintain the open source software. So they faced some um, pain points. Then Huawei helped the CEIS to streamline the entire development process covering development, runtime, and OM, efficiently developing 26 app services. 
Customers commented that their R&D productivity is no longer subject to production tools and can focus on business innovation. So that's the value of Devi Cloud of Huawei. In recent years, low-code development technologies have been developing rapidly. According to Cardinal's report, 75% of large enterprises will use low-code development tools for development by 2024. Huawei Cloud App Cube provides more than 40 types of basic UI components, more than 100 industry assets. And then developers can develop enterprise applications by writing a small amount of code or even without code, improving development efficiency by over 10 times. Currently, Huawei Cloud App Cube has been used in various scenarios such as enterprise office, emergency cloud command, city management, and smart campus. Chang'an Automobile has developed its internal management, business budgeting, and IOC operating system through Huawei Cloud Low Code. The internal management system was developed in nine days, uh, serving over 7,000 7, users, and was highly recognized by our customer. So that's the value of our low code platform. So at present, many enterprises have entered the deep water zone for digital transformation. How to integrate new and legacy application systems like the ERP CRM across clouds? So we couldn't get rid of these legacy applications. Then how to bridge the new and the legacy apps? Second, we have many uh, IT assets. And how to manage uh, assets have become the top priority for enterprise IT departments, including the APIs and the IT processes. Huawei started as a non-cloud native enterprises, uh, and uh, Huawei is also a global company. So within Huawei, we have. Uh, 1,500 self-owned apps and uh, uh, connecting to 150,000 ecosystem apps. We also need to connect 6 million devices and uh, uh, more than 20 data centers worldwide, serving 100 customers across 170 countries. So how to manage the uh, data assets? Based on years of uh, experience in digitalization, Huawei BPIT department has developed the Roma solution and put it on Huawei Cloud. So Roma can uh, consists of uh, four parts. So first, uh, we connect the new and legacy apps to enable smooth evolution of enterprises. Second. How Roma includes a series of cloud services such as Roma Connect. And then we also have the Roma service call uh, by using the, by integrating the blockchain services. And then we also have the Roma Lab uh, to uh, provide the joint labs for customers and partners. So next, I would like to introduce more details about the two cloud services of Roma. The first is Roma Connect. The second is the blockchain services in uh, Roma Service Call. So according to Gartner's prediction, by 2025, enterprises will continue to use 90% of their legacy apps. So we need, they need to integrate with the new cloud native apps. Roma Connect helps enterprises quickly bridge legacy systems and cloud native apps. We provide the API capabilities. Second, we also provide the messaging services. Then the businesses can be integrated, the services can be integrated through the messaging channel. And we also help them to streamline the data. 
then for we also connect to the IoT devices, uh, which can be integrated with uh, IT systems. So currently, we also uh, upgrade the uh, Roma capabilities. So we will release the four types of the capabilities here. So and then at the edge, firstly at the edge, uh, we have the different types of the uh, capabilities. So this year, we uh, uh, launched these four capabilities of Roma Connect. First is Azure deployment. Second is a visualized workflow orchestration. Third is API lifecycle management for API assets, including the development, uh, testing, and, uh, and the management of APIs. And lastly, the enhanced integration capability. So the number of application types that can be connected is increased from 50 to over 100. Currently, Roma Connect has served nine industries with more than 2,000 successful cases and connect 150,000 apps. In 2021, Roma Connect won the Cloud Trustworthiness Best Practice Award. Next, I would like to share with you an example uh, in the electric power industry. Roma has helped SGCC build an all-domain asset management platform. SGCC serves 430 million users nationwide with more than 40,000 substations, 4 million power distribution stations, and more than 60 DC converters stations. In the past, SGCC relied heavily on manual OM of these devices, so the efficiency was very low. And there are also different types of the energy sources like the wind, uh, water, uh, etc. So based on that, uh, Huawei Cloud helps SGCC implement a digital transformation. Roma provides an IoT management platform for 24 provincial branches serving various businesses such as power distribution, transformation, transmission, and campus network. Uh, in Shandong province alone, Roma connected 120,000 smart devices and 1 million gateway devices. In addition, Roma also realizes centralized digital asset management across the entire network, greatly improving the operation efficiency of SGCC. Next, I would like to introduce a blockchain, blockchain service in Roma Service Call. Blockchain technology has experienced the rapid development in recent years, extending from the financial field to various fields such as IoT supply chain and government affairs. Today, we launched the new Huawei Cloud BCS that use a new blockchain engine. A single chain supports 50,000 TPS, improving the throughput by 10 times, and supports 10,000 nodes, increasing the number of nodes by 100 times. One of our e-commerce partners uses the Huawei Cloud BCS to trace production, transport inspection, and customs clearance data of red wine throughout the life cycle, ensuring the authenticity of the source and uh, make, uh, meeting the requirements of the end users. So at the end, I would like to recommend the Enterprise Application Modernization White Paper of Huawei Cloud. So in addition to four passes and six technologies that I am talking about today, it also includes more cutting-edge technologies. Uh, I'm sorry that the English version is not available now and will be provided very soon. We hope it can provide some reference for enterprises application modernization. Many of the uh, uh, technologies in this book have already been put in practice in various industries. For example, Huawei and Chang'an Automobile set up a low-code innovation lab by jointly built a low-code ecosystem. Renzhe, general manager of Chang'an Automobile Data Center, was unable to come to the site due to the epidemic. He recorded a video. Hello, everyone. I am Renzhe from Chang'an Automobile. We are very pleased to join Huawei in launching the low-code joint innovation lab based on Huawei Cloud. Chang'an 
automobile has 159 years of history and 70, 37 years of car manufacturing. Chang'an Automobiles, the sales volume of Chinese brands from January to September 2021 was 1.35 million, up 30.6% and 21.9 percentage points higher than the industry. Now the global automotive industry faces great, cha great challenges. We hope that the low code joint innovation lab will inherit the spirit of independent innovation and transform Chang'an towards an intelligent company. Thank you. So next, let's witness the uh, joint, uh, the launch of the uh, joint lab. Thank Chang'an Automobile. Today, besides Chang'an Automobile, we also invite another important customer to talk about their application modernization. He is from the China Oil and Gas Pipeline Network Corporation, uh, Mr. Wang Zhen. Thank you, Xu Feng, for your speech. Now, please welcome. Digital Product Director of the Digitalization Depth of Pipe China, uh, Mr. Wang Jian, to share with us remotely. His topic is Digitalizing the National Oil and Gas Pipeline Network. Dear guests, good morning. Thank Huawei for the invitation, and I'm very glad to attend the Huawei Cloud Tech Summit and discuss industry digitalization and application modernization. It's a pity that due to uh, the pandemic, I could not uh, make it to the site. My topic of today's sharing is digitalizing the national oil and gas pipeline network. Through this speech, I'd like to share with you Pipe China's practice on application modernization based on Huawei Cloud. Pipe China's application governance and modernization are carried out as the group company is going digital. As a young company in the oil and gas industry, Pipe China builds and operates oil and gas infrastructure. It is responsible for interconnectivity of uh, main pipes and uh, social pipes and scheduling of national oil and gas pipe network, open the infrastructure to users, enhance transportation efficiency of oil and gas resources, and ensure efficient operations of this industry. Pipe China adheres to three pr principles, seven national strategy, seven people, and seven the industry. Based upon these principles, we have developed a strategy of building smart and interconnected big pipe network, building an uh, open big platform. Pipe China raised a market-oriented, platform-based digitalization and innovative management strategies in building modern governance system of Pipe China. The chairman, Mr. Zhang Wei, said we should rely on digitalization to build a better and a unique company. Since our uh, establishment, we have been working with Huawei in digital transformation, and we have set a vision of digitalization setting Pipe China apart from the pack. First, through digitalization, over 90,000 kilometers of pipes, over 1,000 stations, and over 30,000 employees are connected, achieving unmanned operations and unmanned guarding. We broke the data silo and converged data, achieving one network for the whole country. Second, through digital twins, around one trillion physical assets, through digitalization of objects, process, and rules, which converted to massive data assets. By utilizing data assets, we've created more value. And third, 
Digitalization has enabled Pipe China to evolve from transporting oil and gas to transmitting electrons and photons. In the future, leveraging the digital platform, Pipe will become a core production element of the digital world. We can form a new X plus one plus X a business model. Pipe China can also use its nationwide physical network, LNG cooling capacity, compressor residue heat and residue com pressure, and explore new services like uh, carbon dioxide, uh, hydrogen storage and transportation, and solar energy. We believe that the platform is the foundation for us to be service-oriented. We should use the industry-leading cloud platform to build the digital foundation for Pump Pipe China, and that is the digital platform. The digital platform includes infrastructure and a series of key ICT platform technologies, and it has defined PASS and APASS. We hope that the digital platform will become the receiver of smart pipe data and the black soil of Pipe China's digital asset, as well as the driver of business innovation and concentrate uh, and to concentrate the advanced technologies to continuously drive digital upgrading of Pipe China. From the technology perspective, Pipe China a uh, digital platform has multiple layers, clear functions, and a unified architecture. Achieving uh, shared resources, standard structure, converged data, and service-based capabilities, as well as scenario-based applications. We want to build an application we want to provide application services supported by the digital platform, accumulate capabilities and experience in this platform continuously evolve this dynamic digital platform. By doing so, we'll be able to continuously drive digital transformation and upgrading. Together with Huawei, we've built the digital platform for Pipe China. All application systems are developed and deployed on this platform in an efficient manner. We have a diversified of applications on the digital platform, for example, safety production operation management platform, HCA management, smart station, blockchain for risk control related to payment, risk resource control for supporting the carbon reducing uh, reduction strategy. Everything is visible and manageable. Based upon the blueprint and architecture of the digital platform, and by leveraging Huawei's cloud capabilities, Pipe China planned group, region, and city level data centers to support our business arrangement. In the group data center, we build uh, full stack capabilities. In the regional data center, based upon the uh, business needs, uh, we build relevant capabilities serving as one part of the group's unified digital platform service catalog. We also raised the target of uh, four modernizations to achieve cloudification and a service orientation. First, modernization of uh, basic capabilities meet our requirements on the business regarding performance, security, and high reliability. A second, modernization of architecture design. We step on the enterprise architecture principle. The applications must be aligned with the group level application architecture. And based upon that, we addressed the requirements on standardized interfaces, pass components, and technical specifications. And third, modernization of uh, development and O&M. Software development O&M tools based on digital platform enables us to have centralized uh, control and management of the projects. Uh, unified, uh, we can unify security standards and uh, code specification. And together with full coding and low coding capabilities, we can achieve agile and intensive software development and O&M. Number four, modernization of governance and operations. Digital platform should continuously accumulate Pipe China's digital asset and it use the platform to govern and operate applications and data assets. Application modernization is a long-term and continuous work. Huawei 
as a strategic partner, has provided support regarding cloud platform standards and ecosystem, especially with its understanding, support, and practices on digital transformation. During the 14th five-year plan, Pipe China, based on the architecture and the technical standards of the digital platform, and by leveraging Huawei's cloud technologies and practices, we have built IT application governance system, ensuring unified technical architecture and data standards, and avoiding information silos. And we have achieved the following results. First. Through application governance and uh, architecture control, we have reduced breakpoints. By the end of the 14th five-year plan, we, the application system has covered 95% per, of the business. And number two, by optimizing the process and the requirement response mechanism, the simple requirements are addressed in one to two weeks. Uh, medium level requirements can be closed in one to three months, and complex requirements can be closed in six months or even shorter a cycle. And number three, save uh, construction and O&M cost. By the end of 2024, we can improve the centralization rate of these application systems by 50 percent, reducing 200 to 300 million yuan of uh, O&M cost. And number four, improving security. When the number of applications is reduced, we can reduce the security risk exposure. And next, I will talk about an example uh, related to uh, responding to business requirements and building secure application and management applications. We've developed unified production system standards, specifications, and management rules. But when we implement them at the management bodies and stations, we encounter some challenges. Based on Huawei Cloud, container and microservices, and by utilizing local development and process engine capabilities, we can develop uh, security or secure operation management applications efficiently. We used AI, edge computing, and other technologies to standardize the operations. We use LNG to monitor hard work and tank cars, and changing from manual uh, supervision to AI monitoring. We have uh, eliminated steps uh, of high risks like approval and supervision, and through security uh, operation platforms or supervision function in the future, uh, we can directly see the status of the sites from the stations or regional uh, security centers and uh, at the headquarters. In the future, Pipe China will continue to work with Huawei, build the digital platform, and work on digital governance to streamline pipeline construction, maintenance, operation, and research. Focus on secure production and develop a comprehensive sensing and prediction, intelligent optimization, contingency handling, and agile service capabilities to support uh, production operations, asset management, and project construction. Develop a space air ground collaborated intelligent network that has sensing recognition, decision making, and execution capabilities. Our work uh, of modernization uh, has just started. The group digitalization transformation is a long journey. We need a strong uh, technical partner. Huawei Cloud has become such a partner for us. We believe that together with Huawei, in good and bad times, we will be able to drive the digital transformation of Pipe China forward and support high quality development of Pipe China. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wang Jian, for your wonderful sharing. Now I would like to invite Mr. Li Shusheng, Director of IoT Service Product Department of Huawei Cloud, to give you a keynote speech on a new paradigm from all connected to all intelligent. Good morning, everyone. I am uh, Li Shusheng uh, from the Huawei IoT. I'm very glad to share with you uh, about Huawei's progress in IoT. Today, the topic I would like to share is Internet of Things, starting from devices and thriving in cloud. 
So in the next ten years, digitization will still be the biggest opportunity for enterprises. Digital technologies such as cloud AI and 5G have been used first in industries such as finance and telecom. Industries such as energy, transportation, mining, and agriculture are also actively embracing the digital economy and opening up industry innovation. In this process, the IoT technology is a must-have. So the IoT will see hundreds of billions of connections in a trillion-dollar market. China will see more than. 25% IoT market share, making it the largest IoT market in the world. Last month, uh, 27th of last month, eight commissions in China, including the Ministry of Industry and Information Technology, have jointly released the three-year plan for new IoT infrastructure construction to promote the construction of new IoT infrastructure, focusing on 12 industries and giving full play to the important role of the IoT in promoting the development of the digital economy and enabling industrial transformation. So all these raise higher requirements and expectation for the IoT technology. So just now, Mr. Zhang Yuxin, uh, CTO from Hua of Huawei, introduced the Internet of Everything. So Internet of Everything is not only about the sensing of things, but also about the integration of everything into the intelligent world. So Huawei Cloud proposed a new paradigm of uh, IoT from three aspects, ubiquitous connections, scenario-specific twin engine, and multi-party collaboration. It enables everything to start from devices and thrive in cloud. First, ubiquitous connection of things. Based on more than 60 access protocols, Huawei Cloud IoT has developed a device practical library for various industries, such as manufacturing, transportation, and water conservation and environmental protection, and use more than nine, ten, and more than ten access modes. For example, direct connections of devices, PLC, CNC controller access. So these uh, flexible uh, access modes can flexibly adapt to heterogeneous access requirements in various industries. In addition, the distributed cascading architecture of the device edge cloud synergy enables devices to access the site nearby and implements multi-layer cascading from the site region to center, meeting diversified digital requirements of enterprises. We also support uh, access by hundreds of millions of devices and the millisecond level ultra low latency with 5G. It is also the first IoT platform to pass the level 4 digital IP certification. We built a reliable and secure IoT foundation to empower enterprise digital transformation. And then we can even be applied to the uh, scenarios of uh, transportation, which have the strict requirement for HA. Connection only is not enough. Our Internet of Everything was not only means the sensing of the attributes of things, but also needs to comprehensively present the mutual relationships between things and things, things and people, and things and apps. Take a lithium battery production as an example. There are more than 20 processes and tens of thousands of test points in the whole processes. So one process for battery is the drying oven. So the relationship between the oven points, uh, driving oven and other points is very important, such as the drying oven temperature, which need to interact with the fresh air volume, circulating air temperature, and the humidity. So it needs to connect to thousands of the test points. Then we need a strong digital twin 
to present this relationship, and this、uh, digital term must be very powerful and easy to use. So in this context, while we Cloud IoT provides an easy to use and powerful twin modeling engine. It provides a graphical tool that supports drag and drop and quick modeling with low code or zero code. It also supports multi-dimensional modeling of a device process and the mechanism with spatial temporal data. In addition, the twin engine provides high concurrency with millions of test points and real-time converged computing with millisecond-level response. These functions enable easy modeling for developers of all levels. But we know that we need to apply. The seems to the real business scenarios. Then we can explore the values of the themes or entities. So IoT is an industry with a long industry chain. So to accelerate. IoT solution built and delivery. Huawei Cloud IoT provides the IoT stage is a. Industry ecosystem workbench. First, cloud resource collaboration, implemented by IoT Stage, enables industry partners to purchase, provision, and create required basic resources on the IoT industry ecosystem workbench. Implementing quick integration of IoT apps and cloud resources. Second. Collaboration between the center and edge, and between the edge and edge, provides the one-time integration and multi-point distribution capability to implement a quick deployment. Just now we mentioned that the IoT has a long industry chain, so IoT also supports the ISV, ISI. And SI to develop、uh, to conduct the development based on their own scenarios, so that their developers can focus on their areas of expertise and standardize output content, greatly reducing batch replication costs. So with the multi-party collaboration capability provided by IoT Stage, IoT industry solution can help to improve the build and. E Delivery efficiency by more than three times. So, with connection, training, and collaboration of all things, Huawei Cloud IoT has launched industrial IoT platform, digital factory, and smart life solutions based on the new IoT paradigm. Huawei has worked with partners to build an IoT cloud market.、Uh, How we launched IoT solutions with for with partners for 50 industries and specific scenarios, including manufacturing, transportation, accelerating intelligent upgrade of various industries. Let's look at the industrial IoT platform first. So it is a one-stop platform for OT data governance. It focuses on. OT data access, cleansing, modeling, analytics, and application. The platform uses three centers to deliver key capabilities. First, the OT data center. It provides、uh, more than 150 industrial protocols, covers more than 95% of、uh, PLC, CNC devices, and、uh, provides more than 30 cleansing operators. Ensure that OT data can be connected, trusted, and available. Second, model asset center. It provides the OEE and SPC and other industrial twin models, so that enterprises and partners can quickly reflect complex production processes. Last. The application management center. 
It provides end-to-end -end management capabilities for apps from integration, distribution, deployment, and OM. So, including the Rankai uh, kernel or IoT uh, introduced by Mr. Xu uh, Feng, then with this one platform and three centers. Uh, the time for processing production data can be shortened by more than four times, and the service rollout speed can be increased by two times. Here is an example in mining industry. Last uh, night, yes, last night we discussed with the uh, chief engineer uh, of uh, the uh, Shanxi uh, coal uh, group. So the coal mining um, production system is a complex industrial system. There are hundreds of kinds of the equipment for mining and environmental monitoring in the mine, and there are over 30 OT systems underground. So mining operations cannot be fully sensed and managed in a refined manner. So based on Huawei Cloud IoT platform, the Holiulin coal mine of Shanxi Coal Group has completed the modeling of 200 mining equipment, access of 35 types of OT systems, and 400 service models. So all services covering people, wind, water, electricity, and coal are digitized with cross-system collaboration and end-to-end -end intelligent management of process. It achieves 97.7% intelligent coal mining rate for smarter mining. Later, the Hong Shu Ling, uh, or Hong Liu Ling will introduce their case specifically. So next, let's look at the digital factory so solution. Different from the industrial IoT platform, the digital factory solution provides out-of-the-box usability for transparent production for discrete processing modes such as machining, injection molding, and electronics. First, industrial edge links equipment, people, and materials. Second, the digital factory platform implements unified storage of basic factory data Simple configuration and on-demand invocation are required for adding uh, apps, allowing services to be quickly rolled out within one to uh, three weeks. But originally, it may need one to three months. So with the linked equipment, people orders, and real-time analysis of production KPIs, for transparent production. So here is a video about our digital factory. So here, Huawei Cloud Digital Factory implements unified management of equipment, people privilege app apps. When adding a new app, you just need to configure the privilege for accounts. Then. Based on the digital factory solution, uh, we have a case uh, in the a, a Liad group in Shenzhen. So we know that Liad is a LED production producer. So we have realized the real-time transparent production of OEE volume and non-conformance rate by collecting and analyzing SPI and AOI data of SMT production. Through barcode management, the warehouse management is transparent and standardized. We help Liad uh, achieve efficient online collaboration in order material preparation, production, quality monitoring, and shipment, improving productivity by more than 20%. So this is our third solution, that's Smart Life. So in June this year, Huawei Harmony OS 2.0 was officially launched, bringing consumer better experience. Huawei Cloud IoT has collaborated with Harmony OS to launch the Smart Life solution, 
provides a one-stop, out-of-the-box and end-to-end -end intelligent hardware solution for domestic electro electronic equipment manufacturers. So it supports full access of Harmony OS devices and non-Harmony OS devices based on one platform. Implementing the appliance uh, producers uh, to implement uh, unified management and operation of all devices from multiple channels like Jindong, Timor. Currently, there is no platform that can help them to achieve the centralized integration of data for uh, centralized analysis. But now, Huawei can provide a channel for them to integrate the data, achieving the convergence of B2B and B2C. Here is a case about the messenger. So based on our smart life, messenger provides smart kitchen solution for better cooking with the support of Harmony OS. Consumers can enjoy one hop direct access to the manufacturer with their mobile phones. So messenger can also get the data for real-time analysis and optimize their products and improve their competitiveness by collecting and analyzing equipment data. So the preceding three solutions are only part of Huawei Cloud to enable digitization in the IoT field. In the future, we will continue to focus on building basic IoT capabilities, enabling everything to start from devices and thrive in cloud. And we also hope to work with more partners and customers to accelerate digital transformation with more solutions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Li Shuxin, for Li Shuxin, for your speech. We have seen that um, Huawei Cloud, based on the new paradigm, is accelerating intelligent upgrading of all industries. Now, please welcome Director of the Chief Engineer Office of Shanbei Hongliu and Ling. Um, Mr. Lin Hongtao is going to share with us digital intelligence for mining, uh, Hong Liu Lin, intelligent coal mining. Please welcome. Good morning, everyone. I'm from Shanbei Coal Mine Group, uh, Hong Liu Lin Company. I'm very glad to share with you the digitalization practice of our company. The title of my presentation is uh, Digital Intelligence for Mining. There is a saying that bright people observe the trend, wise people follow it, winners shape it. In February 2020, the NDRC and eight ministries published a guideline on accelerating digitalization of coal mines. This June, the Energy Administration and the Mine Safety Administration published another guideline on this, advocating accelerating applying ICT technologies in coal mining. So from policy, industry and perspective, and from our own company perspective, intelligent mining has become the new engine for high quality development of the coal mining industry. Hong Liu Lin Company is affiliated to Shanxi Coal Mine Coal Group. It was um, put into production in 2011. Last year, the um, company developed a strategy of uh, becoming a world class enterprise. And based upon that, Hong Liu Lin. Uh, confirmed the strategy of uh, 931. 9 refers to 9 indicators and 9 development principles, namely security, green, efficiency, intelligence, innovation, refinement, human centric sharing, and integrity. This is in line with the strategy of the central government and new development philosophies uh, of the uh, state, like innovation, coordination, green, openness, and sharing. It is also aligned with the business positioning of uh, Shanbei Mining Company. 
It is also an integral pursuit of uh, Hong Liu Ling. Three uh, refers to the three pillars in the middle, intelligent collaboration, underground air quality control, and green ecosystem. And one refers to one vision, that is to build the industry's number one and world class, a modern coal mine company. And next I will focus on the three pillars and share our experience. Uh, last, last year, uh, Hong Liu Ling became the first batch of intelligent mines. There are 71 in total in Shanxi province, excluding the central uh, government-owned uh, companies. There are nine others. And uh, under uh, Shanxi Coal Mine Group, there are seven. And Hong Liu Ling is one of the seven. This February, Hong Liu Ling and Huawei achieved a strategic cooperation agreement. In February, Zhou Zhilei from Huawei uh, visited uh, Shanxi, and Hong Liu Ling was the first company he visited there. We discussed strategic cooperation. We want to work with industry players to build Hong Liu Ling. A, a number one player in the industry and a world-class company. With new generation ICT technologies, we developed the top-level design, and we're going to develop uh, infrastructure first. So far, we have already um, deployed 4G and 5G networks and also upgraded the industrial um, network a 5G video network, cybersecurity 2.0, a modularized data center, cloud, build, cloud computing a platform, comprehensive control, uh, and other 25 intelligent projects. This year, our focus is uh, intelligence. The essence, in essence, uh, smart mining is about industrial internet, and the key lies in a unified architecture and a unified digital cloud platform. We want to break the data silos or information silos and also develop unified interfaces to accumulate data assets and simplify the platform construction. This year, we have uh, developed uh, we have collected data and data modeling, data leaking um, of 35 business uh, systems, uh, significantly simplified the collaboration among different uh, systems. And next, I'm going to talk about uh, the IoT platform and how is that applied in our company. Huawei Cloud IoT platform is first um, applied in our company in the coal mining industry. This IoT platform collects the uh, data. As a oil company, uh, people are not very um, do not have high awareness of the data. We care more about the functions, performance, and reliability. But why is it necessary for me to talk about uh, uh, Huawei's IoT platform? Because data has become a new production material. We have to keep up with the time. And for coal mining, we have uh, evolved the um, mining technologies. And now we are using intelligent mining techniques. In the beginning, we focused on people, and now we are, and then uh, the production and the technology management people become more important. And later, the um, people who are managing the machines uh, were becoming more important. And now we are at the intelligent mining stage. Um, people need to acquire more uh, expertise related to information technologies. Over the past two years, 
the Security Bureau Administration and the Energy Administration of the country have already collected um, security and people monitoring uh, data. So the Energy Administration can have a real-time visibility of uh, uh, problems or accidents. And if they are not handled in a timely manner, the mining, the mines would, may be suspended from production. In addition, we have uh, improved the, the technology. The uh, dangerous operation sites uh, should be uh, closely monitored because the energy administration have. Uh, has visibility about that too. Uh, therefore, data is uh, becoming more important. Uh, by cooperating with Huawei, we want to build uh, or create standards for data management and make it a uh, standard for Shanbei uh, Coal Mine Group and also for the whole industry. From production uh, and also, we want to integrate the different uh, systems. On the other side, after we converge the data, we can do a lot of things. Data means experience, and data can provide a lot of things to us. Uh, for example, how can we optimize the digging? Uh, is uh, our staffing appropriate? Is the production efficient? Uh, we can get uh, such intelligence from data. Based upon data collection enabled by Huawei Cloud, we worked with uh, Huawei and uh, Xi'an Jiao Tong University uh, to have developed a uh, um, Comm My comprehensive control platform. Uh, this platform is based on Huawei Cloud. And this is the first one in our industry. There are five chains, personnel, air, water, electricity, and coal. We restructured the production management system based upon these five chains. Break the silos among digging, collection, transportation, storage, cleaning, uh, sales, etc achieving end-to-end -end visibility. The management people uh, are better supported and informed in making decisions. Collaboration is more intelligent and efficiency is higher. This is the intelligent operation management system. Uh, this is uh, uh, created by Huawei's ISDP uh, team. Uh, this was uh, launched uh, in, on 13th of this month, it was uh, well received. The coal mine environment is um, complex and difficult to be predicted. It's difficult to explore the space, while well, it's even more difficult to explore the underground. The prediction of the conditions underground is really a challenge because of the uh, hard uh, predictability and because a uh, variety of uh, systems and also because of uh, an even experience and the quality of uh, the people. Standardization of uh, coal mine operations is really difficult. So with the system, we want to standardize the operations, use process and uh, systems to improve security and also efficiency and develop intelligent coal mines. This system can address three things. The first one is the team uh, le leaders may always say uh, they do not have enough human resources. Well, the system can tell us uh, whether 
what the human resource people may always say, you have got enough human resources. So who, who can tell uh, who is correct? The system can, because the system has data. The leaders may say that uh, the work is not done well, the efficiency is too low, uh, management capabilities need to be improved. Well, for the team leaders, they think they may say uh, we are understaffed and the resources are insufficient. So who can tell um, which one is correct? The system can, because system has data. The society and the industry is using digital technologies to uh, reducing headcounts and improving efficiency. So what is the organizational architecture for based on intelligent technologies? Who can tell us? The system can, because it has data. That is the value of developing the intelligent operation management system. In the beginning of this year, Hong Liu Ling, together with Huawei, um, started to build a smart campus. Based on the logic of being staff caring, sensitive, and smart, we created many applications like Easy Pass, pandemic control, uh, smart showering, uh, irrigation, uh, security, uh, prevent, uh, protection, etc. Improving the sense of belonging and happiness and sense of achievements of the employees. The campus, uh, smart campus development is based upon cloud platform. More systems will go live in the future. To reduce emissions, we are piloting uh, PV solution and also thermal um, uh, solutions to build a low carbon or zero carbon green campus. The second uh, pillar. We know that uh, anthracosis and uh, pneumoconiosis are the most common and serious diseases. And it has been a trouble for the coal mining industry to let underground employees can breathe fresh air. We have taken some measures. We are not just uh, looking at uh, their uh, safety, but also their health. We look at six aspects. We are going to develop uh, four technical equipment, one assurance system and one alert uh, platform to improve the air quality underground. The third uh, pillar is about um, green ecosystem. Green environment is the paramount. In Hong Liuning, we, on the one hand, look at security or secure production. On the other side, we look at ecosystem development. We mainly do three things. The first one is plant trees on the 28,000 uh, mu of uh, mined areas and build demonstration zones uh, where uh, we have planted uh, fruit trees and constructed parks. Uh, south to the company, there were 247 mu of um, uh, area. We're going to develop a recovery park. And in this campus, we will build a 4,800 square meters demonstration park, displaying the history of coal mining from the very early days till today, the uh, how coal has been formed. And also um, in that uh, park, we de demonstrate the journey of the coal mining industry. Besides, we display coal-related uh, products. Uh, for example, uh, from coal, we can get uh, fuel f or uh, resources for the aircraft, for, for the spacecraft. Coal is not just one uh, material for um, electricity, it is also a, a kind of um, uh, energy source for many other industries. 
this aims to improve people's understanding of uh, uh, coal mines. So just now, I shared with you the construction logic and also the status of the three pillars in Hong Liu Ling. In building intelligent mines, we have been thinking, as Mr. Zhang has mentioned, without containers, there will be no, there would be no uh, globalization. If we recall the development of the computer uh, internet, if without the Turing machine concept raised uh, in 1936, there would be no IoT or AI. From the Turing machine in the early days to today's computer-enabled internet, no one has conceived that it would so fundamentally change our work and life, and it will continue to shape the future world. We are now working with experts uh, in the industry, including Huawei and other partners. We want to create the Turing machine of the coal mining industry. We hope we can work together to achieve intelligence sensing, smart decision making, and automatic execution, and let that fundamentally change the production and operation model of the coal mining industry. The time to take actions is now. Uh, Shanxi Coal Mine Group and Shanbei uh, Hong Liu Ling Company will dive deep in intelligent collaboration, safe production, and green uh, development and drive the company to develop uh, even better. And last, thank you for your listening. Uh, we welcome the guests and uh, peer companies to visit us. Thank you. Thanks to Mr. Lin Hongtao for your wonderful sharing. Huawei Cloud adheres to openness, collaboration, and shared success, and is committed to becoming fertile soil for application innovation in various industries, helping partners accelerate the value transformation. Next, Mr. Wang Xihai, Director of Developer Alliance Product Department of Huawei Cloud, would like to share the topic, a prosperous application ecosystem for a digital future. Dear guests and friends online, good morning. I am Wang Xihai from Developer Alliance Product Department of Huawei Cloud. The topic of my presentation today is a prosperous application ecosystem for a digital future. Huawei Cloud is committed to becoming the cloud foundation of the intelligent world and the cornerstone of enterprise digital transformation. Uh, just now, my uh, the speakers already mentioned that Huawei has the uh, rich uh, products, uh, tool chains, etc. Then, with these products and tool chains and capabilities, uh, I would like to share with you about how we will distribute and open these capabilities. We will work with partners to better serve customers, build a prosperous application ecosystem, and share the digital future of the e uh, ecosystem. While we cloud ecosystem construction will focus on industry application uh, requirements and increase the following four aspects. First, uh, serve tens of uh, millions of uh, developers, increase R&D investment in developer tool chains, enhance IDE and mobile capabilities, improve developer experience, and build a developer alliance that collaborate with enterprise applications and collaborate with Huawei Cloud and Device Cloud. Second, open Huawei's digital transformation experience to cloud services and work with partners work together to build a uh, uh, macro was passed in the industry and continuously enrich Huawei Cloud capabilities so that the developers can easily reuse industry experience. 
third, continue to invest uh, investment to help partners develop applications, migrate to the cloud, and continuously operate, accelerate cloud native and SaaS transformation. Fourth, build the best app distribution, purchase, and service experience to build the best enterprise platform. In addition, we provide uh, cloud market capabilities to help customers and partners build their own application distribution systems and expand the market for cloud apps. With the concept of customer centricity, Huawei Cloud works with partners to build and share macroverse APAs in the industry, serves tens of the millions of developers, builds an enterprise app distribution platform. So to our end, at the developers will have provided 30 types of cloud services, 128 keys, and over 30,000 APIs. In addition, 14 types of development tools and five learning support platforms have been built to improve developer experience, include the HMS Core and the Cloud IDE, um, provide the developers with the smooth and efficient uh, Experience currently, uh, Cloud ITE has become a productivity tool for hundreds of thousands of developers. Huawei Cloud enables developers to use open capabilities more conveniently and tools more efficiently for easier access to learning support and more flexibly to apply innovation. Huawei Cloud-based Macroverse APAS is an API service that we have accumulated on the cloud platform and open to developers with Huawei's years of uh, experience, innovation, and digital transformation. Instead of replicating the work from zero to one, developers can focus more on creating business value. Currently, Huawei Cloud Macroverse APAS provides five digital service root engines, including payment, search, browsing, map, and advertising. Huawei provides HMS Core and App Gallery Connect for mobile developers. Mobile apps developed based on Huawei Cloud can be put on the Huawei Cloud App Store with one click. So in nine industries, including uh, manufacturing, automobile, travel, travel retail, healthcare, uh, uh, we also provide cloud services that enable industrial scenario based innovation. In the process of in depth digital development, Huawei Cloud Microverse APAS will break the existing barrier to enable industry specific innovation. In a future-oriented intelligent world, all apps will be cloud-based to meet the requirements of enterprise services to quickly respond to market changes. So in this uh, SaaS partner program of Huawei, Huawei will invest 200 million to empower 1,000 SaaS partners and help 500,000 enterprises in innovate on the cloud. Currently, we have uh, aggregated over 2,000 SaaS apps, including general SaaS apps such as ERP, HR, and finance, as well as industry SaaS for smart manufacturing finance government. Huawei Cloud will work with SaaS partners to seize industry opportunities to build a business value and compete for the uh, future in the digital era. Huawei Cloud is committed to building the cloud market into the best enterprise app distribution platform, meeting customers' uh, service requirements, and creating greater business value for partners. On the supply side, we offer a wide range of uh, commodities, including software, hardware, professional services, content, and licenses, and also hardware. Uh, we can support the uh, one-stop uh, distribution and uh, create a new value for customers. We can even cover the uh, e-government clouds, uh, industrial cloud, to reach more customers and bring greater 
um, opportunities for partners on the demand side. And then, uh, so on, we will build the ultimate cloud market service experience, continuously enhance the platform capabilities, and launch more flexible and efficient operation services to enable customers to purchase and use the services more conveniently, meeting service requirements in multiple scenarios. It also makes it easier for our partners and developers to innovate applications and achieve greater success. And so that they can have the uh, more success. So while we feature the product more, is a cloud-based market launched by Huawei Cloud. So with the concept of selecting the best among the best, we formulate the unified rules and strictly control the source and capabilities of the service providers and provide users with better cloud-based products. So we served the customers in various industries. We have launched 11 large pavilions. All uh, products are selectively, strictly selected, and we provide one-stop services, including guarantee, supervision, refund, and uh, selection. So in, after the launch, since its launch in 2018, Huawei uh, featured product more has gathered 300 partners and more than 500 top quality uh, apps. More than 30 of the 300 partners have sales of more than 10 million. The number of paid users exceeded 100,000. Huawei's cloud market uh, besides providing best quality products, we are going to also going to provide um, frictionless user experience and find uh, optimization uh, means looking at the user journey and the private journey and 14 core scenarios. We are going to provide extremely superior experience, solve the experience issues in an efficient way, provide refined operations of uh, all steps. So as to give a good experience to our users. Well, at the same time, the seller's uh, capital turnover efficiency will be improved. Uh, we will help them to improve marketing and sales capabilities, continuously evolve the business model in the cloud, cloud market, and make this platform more competitive. Huawei Cloud, uh, cloud Market provides the following four types of support to the merchants. Uh, technology support, platform support, sales support, and shared opportunities. In terms of uh, uh, marketing support, Huawei is very open. We want to uh, share the resources of uh, digital marketing and uh, event marketing. For the potential uh, customers, uh, we provide, uh, uh, for the potential merchants, we provide fund support. Regarding shared opportunities, Huawei Cloud opens all sales resources with uh, our merchants. In addition, we have developed over 120 innovation centers, over 90 government cloud base. We share the business opportunities with the merchants on Huawei Cloud. At the technology side, Huawei is going to invest 100 million US dollars to upgrade the developer program at the technology level. And we're going to have a, a deep coupling with ISV to provide a deep enablement and conduct a joint innovation. In terms of uh, platform support, we have published the certification process and uh, assessment rules. It is fair and object. In delivery, we provide a service supervision services, ensuring the interests of uh, the merchants and also the cus consumers or the customers. In addition, Huawei's uh, Spark program 
which is a startup supporting program. Many of you may know Huawei's Spark program. This is for the startup companies globally. This program aims to provide free cloud resources and professional technical training and support to qualified startups. We open Huawei Cloud business resources to them, and we provide Huawei Cloud as a black soil to them. Huawei Spark in 2021 organized uh, activities in many cities in China together with uh, renowned incubators and VCs. We want to build an industry support and a startup support platform from training camp to acceleration camp, provide technical enablement and resource support to startup companies in their end-to-end -end life cycle and support startups to succeed. At present, we have recruited over 800 startups globally, 55 have upgraded their solutions, 21 have launched new products or transformed their business, 48 have expanded their markets. Some outstanding companies' uh, products have been put on the shelf of Huawei cloud uh, market or featured product more, where they have got more business opportunities. Huawei Cloud, with the principle of openness, collaboration, and shared success, together with industry partners, aims we want to support industry players to transform digitally. So far, we have uh, many uh, developers, uh, advisor, consulting partners, and technical partners. The turnover has exceeded 1 billion yuan in 2020. The partner's revenue accounted for over 60%. In 2020, the revenue growth of Huawei Cloud Partner reached 188%. Here, we want to invite more companies to join Huawei Cloud ecosystem and join Huawei Cloud market and featured products more. And last, thank customers, developers, and partners for your long-term support to Huawei Cloud. In the future, we look forward to work with more partners and developers to accelerate the digital transformation of China and explore the future together. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wang Xihai, for your wonderful presentation. Respected leaders, guests, Huawei Cloud Tech Summit keynote ends here. Five tech sessions will start at 2 p.m. Welcome you to stay tuned. For the audience online, you can watch the live streaming at Huawei Cloud official website. By the end of the sessions, there will be a prize draw activity. Uh, Huawei watches and other gifts are waiting for you. Uh, for lunch, we have uh, prepared uh, the buffet for you uh, at the first and the third floor of this hotel. Our staff will guide you there. Attached to your badge, there is a coupon, and you can use that for lunch. Thank you again for attending. See you in the afternoon.